Good morning, brave adventurers. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash. If you've ever thought that maybe you were terrible at making your own maps in SGB, then I may have a program to show you that could be very useful for you. Today, I'm going to show you the SGB Map Maker tool. This can be found over at the Emily and Charlotte Lounge. That's emilycharlotte.jp. I'll put a link in the description below. Emily Charlotte Lounge has a few different tools that you can access and some games and some other projects, not necessarily related to SGB, but all kinds of different things. They do have two things related to SGB though. They have the SGB Map Maker and the SGB Val Name Editor. Now the SGB Val Name Editor can be used to completely replace the names of all of your global integer variables in Smile Game Builder without making any destructive changes. That could be extremely useful for some people, so I'll do a video on that later. And just a note before I leave this screen, if you decide to come here and try this out yourself, please back up your project first because I haven't used this and I can't vouch as to whether it does or does not damage or change anything super important. So the SGB map maker, what is this? Well, in the site's own words, that is the words translated with a little bit of help from Google Translate, it is a software that helps you a little bit in creating maps for SGB. The luminance or brightness of any image is basically used to generate a map for you automatically. You can download this and it will run on Windows 10. The last time the program was updated was in 2018, but at the end of 2019, the dev confirmed that it still worked with SGB 1.12. And I'm here to tell you that it does work with my version of SGB, which is the latest version as of this video, 1.12.11.1. There are no problems. So how does this work? Basically, you are asked to create a map file. And this is just an example of what that map file could look like. Yours could look very different. And once you've played with this tool a little bit, you'll know exactly what all of this means and what kind of changes you need to make to tweak the look of your map. It doesn't matter what size map you make. The only thing that matters is that you are aware how the app will use your tile elevations in the upper left-hand corner. You will basically use the upper left-hand corner of your map, starting from the very upper leftmost corner, to draw tiles on in order to tell the generator what tiles it's allowed to use at what elevations for the image that it's going to generate. The second row can be used to specify a tile for roads and a tile for the rivers. That is a separate optional process that can also be done using this app, so we'll check that out as well. But what this image is suggesting is that this lowest elevation tile will be used as the only tile for this elevation in the map. Any tile with an elevation of one will be able to use one of the four tiles here. And if you have the same tile more than once, you're just increasing the chances of that tile being used. And then the next elevation will tell the program what tiles it's allowed to use for that elevation and so on up to level 20. Here is what my so essentially you are building a tile set out of tiles to tell the generator what it can use. This is what my tile set will use for the example that I'll show you. And don't worry, I'll build several more of these and show you so that you have a clear idea of what's going on here. Basically, I'm going to allow the program to use the grass tile and the flowers tile for the lowest elevations, the rock and rock ivy tiles for elevations of one, Dirt and Dirt 2 for elevations of 2, and for the elevation of 3, I'm going to use the Field Tile. These all come with SGB. They're all in the Natural tab under Terrain. Then I'll just put a tile to be used for the Road once I explore that option. And then the tile for River, I'll just use the default Water Tile that's already everywhere. The program's only going to look at these two tiles in the second row if you're using the Roads and Rivers function. So nothing else matters here. It's not going to look at anything else in this map. Now this map is 256 tiles by 256 tiles. It's the largest map SGB can handle. It is absolutely massive and it's probably going to take a while to load on most people's PCs. So it's not one that I'm planning on playing, but we will test play this map and run around in it after we've generated our terrain. Now we can't do anything with the map generator while we still have the map open in SGB, so let's go ahead and save our file, and then click the game file button to return to the top menu in SGB, and then we can open the SGB map maker. So this is what the tool looks like when you first open it. The only UI that we need to worry about right now is in the upper left hand corner, and this is where we get to specify our map file. One thing to note is that all of the UI is in English, making this pretty handy. 
for English speakers. I'll explain everything else after we've opened our file. So let's open and you will have to browse to your project folder, go into your map folder, and then specify which map you'd like to open. The map that I just showed you was map underscore 001.sgr. One really nice thing about this program is it will make backups of your maps for you. So you can't just irreversibly destroy a map that you worked hard on. Or if you like the way one particularly generated map looks, you can back up to that map. So now the map is open and we know that we've opened the correct map because the name of it is here. It was generated underscore two and the width and height are specified. They are 256 by 256. Note, you cannot change any of this in this program. All right, the next thing we need to do is open an image file that will tell the map generator how to generate the map. And to do that, I'm just gonna randomly select my channel logo. It's not gonna make for a very interesting map, or maybe it will. So here is the image in the center. It did turn it to black and white or monochrome rather, and that's fine because it's just the brightness values that it is interpreting. Here is the generated map or rather what it will look like. Now, this isn't really a thumbnail of the map. Rather, the greens don't indicate the different grass tiles. The blue does not mean water tiles. These colors correspond to the map chip index colors. So I'll explain this table now. We have our map chip index, which is a table that has columns numbered from one to 20 and a 21st column with the kanji for road, a 22nd column with the kanji for river. There are five additional rows. There are five cells under each number. Each one of these numbers represents a height of the tile in SGB. You can have heights from one to 20. And there are five additional rows, so there are five cells under each number. The colored cell is just a color label. It can be anything you specify. In my opinion, since the first tiles are grassy, I'm going to make the label for the first tile elevation green. And the second elevation was more of a brown. So we'll go into a light brown first. And then the third elevation was a dark brown. The fourth elevation was really dark, so I'll make that black. And I didn't use anything for the fifth through 20th elevations, so you'll see the values underneath those numbers are all blank. The numbers underneath the elevations for one through four seem to contain a bunch of random numbers, but what these really are are the tiles that I did decide to use. I used two out of the available four slots for the first elevation, so those two have numbers. I used two more tiles for my second elevation, two more tiles for my third, and I only used one tile for my fourth elevation. But these are the numbers that it has granted everything. Actually, looking at the river and how it has a zero in it, I think I'm realizing that I need to put a tile there that's not the deep water default tile. It probably just skipped over that thinking that I didn't want to use a tile at all. But now that I've changed the labels, we can hit update. And this is a much better representation of what our overall map is going to look like if we consider that the colors now correspond to the actual tiles that we are using incidental of their elevation. It's gonna be a lot better to show you what this ends up looking like, so let's actually hit save now. Now we do get a standard warning that the map file will be overwritten. Be sure to back it up before saving. Once we have done this, we're not gonna be able to get the old one back. It's going to be gone forever unless it did get backed up in the backup folder. So we'll hit OK, and then we'll open the game project. Now, if you find that your map did not get updated, it may be because your game project was still open. I've tested this a few times, and it seems that the app will tell you that the map was updated or saved, and then when you go into your project file, if it was open the entire time, of course, nothing will have changed because the app didn't actually have permission to change a file that was already open. So this was the map that I generated earlier with the same image, and this was a 64 by 64 tile sized map, and it didn't turn out great for a variety of reasons. It's just not practical to use whatever image. It can give you some interesting results, but it doesn't quite look like a proper terrain or landscaped area. But now we'll look at the much larger map, and you can see that this map, while it's still just as probably not practical or useful, it ends up being a much higher resolution. You can see everything very clearly that was provided with the image. You can even see the mole that I have right above my lip, or at least my caricature's lip. So let's analyze this a little bit closer. If we go down, we can see on the floor elevation that we have water, grass, and flower tiles all being used. And although the original map, the one that I used to give this image its properties, is now 
overwritten, I did create a duplicate of that map to show you kind of what it's drawing from here. So it is drawing from the water tile, despite the water tile not being included here. And then it's using the grass and flower tiles to make up the majority of the lowest elevation. Then we'll have brown rock, then dark brown rock, and then more of the dark, darkest brown rock, making up our other elevations. And since those were determined by the brightness of the image, we have more of the darkest brown rock. Note that the color had nothing to do with the color of the tile. It was just the placement of the tile in my template. Just because the image is dark in a certain area doesn't mean that it's going to use the darker tile. It's going to use the tile of the elevation that's most appropriate for that brightness level. So if we put this up side by side with the black and white image that I imported, the brightest areas of the image are on the character's skin and the eyes, the white of the eyes in particular. And that was the highest elevation, while the darkest areas were in the hair and in the shirt of the character, and those were the lowest elevation. This is really, really cool, though. <laughs> I like that a lot. My flannel has created an entire world, or at least it has the power to. So that's kind of what it looks like here, but I'm gonna go do something else really quick. Let's get out of this by clicking the game file button, and then we'll come back to our program, and I want to show you what happens when you click invert high-low. You may decide that you'd rather have your brightest values be the tiles that are at the top, and if that's the case, then let's save and reopen project. And now you can see that all of the grass is on the face where it used to be outside in the hair and the high rock formations which used to make up the face and skin of the character are now being used as the hair and beyond everything has been inverted so it's gone from brightest to darkest in terms of elevation all right let's do this again but this time let's make something a little bit more practical we'll put the water tile the deep water tile down as the first tile then i'll use four tiles proper after that three grass and one flower then I'll use some ivy and then the rock to make up the second layer or elevation rather. And then I'm just going to use one tile that I'm going to make really tall. And that's going to be the snow topped sort of mountain peak. And these tiles will always be this level so that it makes sense. Actually, I'd like some variation in height just with the snow peaked mountains. So I'm going to take and raise these up as well at the other heights. So now we'll have four different heights of snow peaked mountains all together. Nothing super tall out of there, nothing super low, but there could be if I wanted there to be. And we'll call this good and save it and then exit the game file. Now I would like to draw myself a terrain. So I'm using paint.net to do that. Go ahead and laugh. I really like paint.net. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this image with a bright green color. This doesn't matter what color it really is because it's just going to be looking at brightness values at the end of the day. Now I'm going to make some filled shapes that I'll put in this image. Seems pretty random right now. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and connect some of these. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab just a slightly different shape and make it much darker. This is going to end up being pretty random when it's done. But I think I have an idea of what this might end up looking like. We use yet another dark color and scatter those around this area, encroaching on some of the other colors. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and save this image. And we're going to make sure to open the correct map file first. So it'll be map 0002.sgr. And we're going to open up a different image. And that one is on my desktop. And this doesn't make much sense here. Let's see what this actually looks like once we get it in SGB. So we'll go ahead and save. Then go back to our project in SGB. Check out our generated map file. Wow, that looks vastly different than what I thought it would, actually. I think I was thinking about how the brightnesses would be used and kind of hoping that the grass would be more prevalent but the grass was a pretty close value in brightness to the other layers that I used. So it might have been smarter of me to do that in black and white. Let's try that again. Let's actually convert the image to black and white, which the program actually tried to do, but the results that I'm getting for doing it in paint.net are, I think, going to be much better or provide a much better result. So 
We've made our image black and white. We'll save it and we'll reopen it in the map generator, but not before we leave the game file. A quick interruption. I realized that I did not make a duplicate of the terrain that I made. So we're going to try this one more time and then I'm going to make sure to duplicate. All right, we've opened up that map in our map generator and we've opened up that image in our map generator. And this is what it seems to come up with. Let's invert that high low. And I'm going to click the interpolation height image to show you what that means. And we'll save. Open up our project in SGB and click on our map. And it is acceptable. This is kind of what I imagined happening when I generated this map. I'm really glad that it took my snow peaked mountains and made them the tallest of the images. It seems like I got that right when I was making that image. Noting once more that it had nothing to do with the colors used in the image, just the brightness alone. It did use a lot of water this time around, and I think that's because I had water as the very first tile used. So if I replace that with grass, there should be no water in this image, I would think. Now what I made was just really, really random and kind of thoughtless. I just threw it together, but the purpose was to see how fast I could make something that would create a map for myself that I could then build off of. I could build a village in this sort of cove. I could build bridges, land bridges or man-made across these different islands in these marshes connecting them. We might as well go ahead and play test this map. Here it is. This is our grand creation. There's actually no lag at all as I walk around this map. Things do seem to pop into view, but that's because of the view distance and the cell size that SGB supports. That, I think, is perfectly fine, depending on how you use it. You can get a real feel uh, for what you kind of need to place in the way so that your players don't notice things popping in in the distance like that. If we had some stuff that was really close to us, some walls or something, we wouldn't be able to see that pop in until we left the house, and then we would already see the assets that had already loaded in. So that's some stuff to think about while you are making these maps. There's a bit of distinction in the edges, walls because I had the rounded terrain option checked for these tiles in particular. That's why they're not straight. So that would be just a one checkbox fix. Other than that, this program works really, really well. And if you took advantage, full advantage of the specification of different tiles, different heights, you can have up to 80 different tiles. That's four different tiles at the 20 different elevations making up your map. And then you could import actual dot ping images of properly generated terrain from a terrain generation program. Now, I know there's a bunch of them out there. I tried to look around for one before I started this. I didn't see anything that I really liked. Um, but then again, I wasn't sure how it would end up looking once it was converted to this SGBified map. So that's it. You can make gigantic maps in SGB or really maps at any resolution. They, they can be 30 by 30 just as easily as they can be 256 by 256. You don't have to do what I did here today, but you can play with the map tool. It's completely free. Link in the description below. Remember, if you're using this with an existing project to back up your maps, because it does forcefully overwrite whatever you have, there is a backups folder that gets generated and put in your maps folder, but I would be absolutely certain that the map that you want backed up is somewhere else, because if you are using this program more than once for the same map, it will probably back up each iteration of the map it makes and destroy your original backup. And you don't want that, I wouldn't think so. Anyway, that's all I had to share. If you make maps with this program for your game and you'd like me to run through them, I'd be way more than happy to do that. Uh, just let me know. And don't forget, there is an official Smile Game Builder game jam going on. So you could use this tool to supplement your world building for your game. And remember that three lucky winners will win keys to RPG developer Bakin when it releases. So check out the game jam link in the description below. Join Make sure you submit something and make sure you rate the other players, the other developers' submissions as well. That's all for now. I have to go. Thank you very much for watching. Comment down below. I respond to those. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye for now.